So, you know, I've been in this industry for almost 35 years. Um, you know, I started when I was really young, really got into reef keeping, um, uh, kind of on the, on the early, you know, the early end of it. Probably 82, 83 is when we started to see, um, you know, act actinic 03 lamps. And, you know, I remember All Seas Marine in, um, in Chicago brought in the first wet dry filter or trickle filter. And there were these, there were these trays that would slide out and you'd keep gravel in the trays. And so it was a really, you know, different approach from the conventional under gravel filters and, and air stones and, and bleached coral skeletons. So, you know, that really opened the door up for reef keeping. Um, reef keeping kind of exploded in the late 90s, um, early 2000s. Um, with, and that was with the, the invent of, of things like high powered lighting systems like metal halide bulbs, um, protein skimmers, foam fractionators, calcium reactors. So, really, the technology ramped up pretty quickly. Um, but you know, for, for many, many years, the, the marine aquarium trade has been solely dependent on wild harvest. So it's really important that, that we all support as many aquaculture initiatives that we can. And whether that's in suit in, in, in other countries um, or that's here in the United States. So, you know, this, this tank's a great example because this aquar aquarium started, um, we actually set this tank up um, in March of 2015. And as you can see, I mean, Almost all the corals in this tank were, you know, one to two inch coral frags. We did have a couple of larger pieces from, from good friends of mine that are second or third generation aquaculture. But as you can see, you know, growing corals in a captive environment when done properly, these, these corals can, can really grow quickly. You know, we use this aquarium here to propagate. Um, uh, it's our bird stock, some of it, for the coral frags that we offer in the diver's den store on liveaquaria.com. Yeah, just, just massive growth out of some of these pieces of coral. And look at this encrusting coral down here. It's coming up on the glass. It's just beautiful. So this is called Montipera coral. And there's a few different species in here, but why I like putting Montipera at the bottom of, of uh, small polyp stony coral tanks is like you said, Eric, just so these corals kind of grow over the top of each other and it, it creates like a really good carpet all the way across the tank, which is, which is really neat. So we had a question about how many pumps we're running on this show tank. That, that's a great question. We have one uh, dart return pump, and the, you know the water flow through the through this sump here is about um, ten times an hour. Um, it's a very very simple setup. So this aquarium has a very large sump, as you can see. It utilizes filter socks, conventional filter socks. How many gallons would you say this sump is, Kevin? Um, it probably holds about seventy gallons of water. Huh. Um, but obviously it's filled up all the way, we want much, much more water than that. You can see it's got a float switch right there. It's actually tied into this, this gray pipe right there. Um, it's starting to fill back up. Uh, we did a water change this morning. But basically it's, again, a very simple setup. We've got two uh, MP60 uh, Vortex from Ecotech Marine. In the back, on the corners of the tank, at the bottom, there's two MP40s. So we've got these power heads, or these uh, pumps synced so that it creates a really random water flow in the, in the aquarium. So again, you know, really, really high water flow, really simple setup with a sump and a pump. And then the lighting that we employ here um, is conventional 400 watt metal halide lamps. Um, those are uh, some radium bulbs. And then we utilize 120 watt LED blue cannon lights. Um, these are uh, made by uh, Current USA. And they're more of a commercial light. Um, again, they're 120 watts each, but they're they're basically all blue actinic light. Um, so it really is a, a really aesthetically pleasing to the eye, and it's it's awesome uh, light spectrum and intensity to grow these these small polyps of any corals. It definitely does the job. And Kevin, we have a very special yellow tang in here. He's playing a little bit of hide and seek right now, but why don't you tell us about him? What makes him different from the others? So he's actually, I can see him right now. He's right right back there. Oh, yeah. let, let me go grab some food real quick. Okay. Come out. Yeah, he's hiding back there. I saw him. Where'd you go? Oh, oh there he is right there. Uh, you probably can't see him too well on video. And I don't know if those of you at home heard, uh, this is a 300 gallon show tank. It is massive, and it's definitely our pride and joy here at the Coral Farm. All right, sorry about that. So. There's been a lot of foot traffic through here, so a lot of these guys are probably scared, but...
There's the yellow tang there. <laughs> and I'll quit pointing so he actually comes out. Yeah. So yellow tang are from Hawaii. They're an endemic fish. They're called Zebrasoma flumescens. Um, yellow tangs are obviously all bright yellow. This fish is really unique in that it's an aberration, has an aberration, and that aberration is these black markings on both sides of the fish, which makes it, again, highly unique. Um, we offered this fish for sale for maybe a couple weeks, and then I pulled it off the website, and you know we wanted to, wanted to keep this specimen because he is so unique. Yeah, a very special fish. It looks like he looks like a race car with racing stripes. We call him a highlighter yellow tank because it looks like somebody took a black Sharpie yeah. and, and, and put black yeah, stripes on him. Know. What's cool though is the fish is actually growing about an inch now and he still has this exact same marking. So I'm pretty confident that even at a full adult, he's still gonna maintain those those cool black stripes. Do we still have some captive bed yellow tangs? We do. Uh, we've been holding on to them for a while. Um, they're actually in one of the coral uh, raceways together uh, in our large ball of stunning coral raceways. I'd love to show everybody those. And speaking of captive bred yellow tanks, I got the, the pleasure and honor of meeting Chad Callen last week yep. down at the Aquatic Experience. Very, very nice guy. And as a former hairstylist, I had to tell him how cool his hair was. <laughs> just a super intelligent guy and just out there, you know, for a great cause. Yeah, you know, it's people like Chad that are that are breaking new ground and, and you're breaking barriers um, at, at the Oceanic Institute in Hawaii. So Chad was the first um, first person to successfully spawn and rear uh, and raise to commercial scale uh, these yellow tang, these zebrasoma flumescens. And you know he, he had had some help from a few people as well, and, and some really good funding and support from Rising Tide. Um, you know, Rising Tide is a fantastic organization. Um, they're, they're a 501c3. It's run by uh, a wonderful lady named Judy St. Ledger. Um, and we're really proud to help support Rising Tide initiatives. Um, Rising Tide basically raises funding um, to provide um, grants for aquaculture, for marine ornamental aquaculture, for our aquarium trade. So it's a really great, great program. Um, I'd encourage everyone to check out the Rising Tide Facebook page. Um, a lot of great information on there. And, and again, they support a lot of these ornamental aquaculture initiatives around the country. So back to Chad and OI in Hawaii. There's a cool fish in my office. You guys have showed oh, yeah. it to you before. The captive bred Hawaiian cleaner wrasse. Yeah. And you can see how big he's getting now. So. You guys get a sneak peek at the coolest office in the world. <laughs> so I'll put a little bit of food in here as well. Um, you know, when I got this fish in, I think it was January, late January, early February of this year, um, this this guy was much far less than an inch. So um, now he's he's actually growing up pretty well, and I'm not sure where he is. So well, while we're waiting for him to come out, Kevin, is this a bounce mushroom down there? Yeah, this is. This is uh, what's called a bounce mushroom. Um, it's just a variety of, of of different types of mushrooms. It's called an interstellar mushroom right here from Australia. Um, here's another colony of bounce mushrooms that I've had for a, a few years now. So some great stuff. <laughs> So in this in this section here, I've got a pair of uh, of Centropygi coloni, uh, which is really cool. There's a big There's fat candy bass up there. Um, he's pretty cryptic, kind of comes in and out of the rocks. This fish here is called Cirrolibris erli, that pink guy with the stripes on him. And then what's really neat, my favorite fish, Anapsis femininus, he's in the corner back there. Um, it's pretty cool because that fish actually transitioned um, into a male. So. Oh yeah. You know, a, a lot of wrasse are, are, are directional hermaphrodites, um, or even bidirectional hermaphrodites. So they can actually change sex from female to male. Nature. <laughs> Got my still have my pair of uh, of Venusta angel or purple mast angelfish here. Um, there's another pair of them in here as well, and then the Collins pair on the right there. There's the cleaner wrasse right there. Oh yeah, there he is. Yeah, he's beautiful. So he uh, must have been him, back cleaning him. some fish. There he, is. <laughs> he was working. But what's interesting is that fish has really taken on a, a massive growth spurt lately. So you know, yeah, it really he's... didn't grow too much for maybe yeah. the first six months. But uh, over the last few months, he's really just taken off. So. I was going to say, I haven't seen him probably over a month. And yeah, I'm definitely bigger. So that's one of the only um, captive bred Hawaiian cleaner wrasse in the, in the country. Um, there's very few of them that were ever produced. There's very few of them that ever went into trade. So I'm, I'm really proud to, to have and you know have the ability to actually own and, and condition this fish. Um, it was actually produced by Javier uh, Montavo. So Javier was a 
you know, another groundbreaker in, in marine ornamental aquaculture um, with this fish right here. So, it's great. What, what else is cool? I want to show you some clownfish that are really, really neat. So in this aquarium here, there's, uh, these are called Ritteri anemones, but the clownfish in there is a new strain of clownfish called Black Storm Clownfish. Um, they're very, very, very unique um, and a little bit pricey. So we procured some of these this week and, and we'll condition these guys up and you know, eventually offer some for sale in the Diver's Den store on Live Aquaria. But as you can see, they've got some really, really interesting markings yeah. across their face. Um, they're, they're relatively young still. The, that brownish color will turn jet black over time okay. um, as they grow. And that's what makes them so unique with that really dark black and, and white contrast. So Those are absolutely beautiful. Really cool. There's, I think we've got eight fish total in here. So Really? Oh, those those red eyes. They're really in there. There's this pair, there's a pair in my office, and then there's a couple pairs out in the, in the coral farm as well. So. Awesome, yeah. This tank here's got some, some unique fish as well. Uh, these are called Madagascar anemone fish. They're amphiprian lot of, uh, lot of fasciatus. And that's a, a unique fish in, in the marine aquarium trade because we just don't see many fish um, exported out of Madagascar here in the United States. So. Um, Got a few shipments of Madagascar fish in over the last few months. Uh, the, the primary target export species is, is uh, gem tang, zebra selma gematum. Um, in the past, gem tangs were only available from Mauritius, uh, which is off the east coast of Africa. But uh, Madagascar is starting to, to, to ship in um, infrequent shipments here <laughs> into the US. And this, this is an endemic species of clownfish to Madagascar, Lata fasciata. Awesome. As you can see, they love their anemones. You know, it's not critical that you keep clownfish with anemones, but the, but they do prefer, um, you know, to, to, to be in the same aquarium as an anemone. If you're an inexperienced hobbyist, a marine hobbyist, and you're you're just starting to get into the hobby, if you've got sufficient light, you've got a stable environment, and you really want an anemone, the the first anemone to, to, to try would would be a bulb tip anemone because they're they're much more adaptable um, than these hat and eye carpets here. Bulb tip anemones come in green and red and orange and a variety of colors, so. Yeah, we can show you some more of those out in the uh, coral farm. Let's shift gears here for a second. We've got a, we've got a gorgeous planted tank we set up out here in the lobby about five, six weeks ago. So we've got current lights on top. And these plants are all from the folks at Tropica. And what's great about Tropica plants is they're raised in a sterile environment. They come to us in a cup, so you don't have algae. There's no pests, no snails, or anything like that. And these things are just exploding. We do run a little CO2 in here. That always helps. This tank is, I believe it's about a 50-gallon tank. I believe it's 45, yeah. 45, 50. It's a gorgeous tank. It's got the bent glass, the rounded edges. But yeah, this plant, this planted tank is just taken off. And we will upload on the website some time-lapse photos from day one. So this aquarium actually has CO2. Um, you know, for successful planted aquariums, carbon dioxide on a, P, on a pH controller, um, and then obviously the Tropic of Fertilizer we add um, once a week. But, you know, as Eric was saying, this, this tank has just exploded in growth. It's you know, pretty impressive how, number one, how clean and sterile these plants are because you're not introducing pests like snails and other things into your planted display, but it's, these plants are just growing like crazy. So really, really cool. We, we've, you know, obviously historically not been into planted aquaria. Um, you know, we've started to offer, excuse me, freshwater fish in the Diver's Den store on Live Aquaria, and we offer the entire line of Tropica um, on liveaquaria.com under, under aquarium plants. And our co-worker Patrick did a great job setting this up. He's got it's good contrast in there. So again, like Kevin said, this is kind of a new venture for us. We're going to see where the live plants go, and maybe we'll start bringing some more in down the road. Let's go back out to the coral farm. Oh, I think we're getting kind of. I think we're getting ready to wrap this up. Maybe let's try to find one more really cool thing to show these guys. One more really cool thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Line crew. <laughs> You guys, so here's the ladies on live Facebook. These, these are some of the really awesome people here that are, are 
you know, fulfilling your orders and really making sure that all the quality, uh, the aquatic livestock is going out as the best it can be. So, big props to you guys. You guys are awesome. And say hi to the live stream. Hi. <laughs> Thanks a lot, guys. Some more people over there. They don't. They're they're shy. And, and here's our always trailing behind us, ever working, Kelvin. Hey. <laughs> Just modding <in> here. <laughs> Well, welcome to the marine world, Alex. We're great to have you, and uh, if you have any questions, there's Michael. Hey, how's it going? Hey, uh, another great uh, team member here on the What's live query team. Michael works in husbandry and coral propagation. He's one of the hard workers here. Everybody here has a job to do, and a very important job to do, whether they're looking over the corals for pests or, or monitoring the, the waters, the, the, I apologize, the salinity, the pH, alkalinity. Everybody plays a very important role here at Live Aquarium. So with that said, I think we're going to wrap things up. Um, Elizabeth, get a hold of me through customer service and we'll, we'll take care of you and that geo if you're interested. And I think that's about all I got today. Again, I just want to thank all my coworkers. Everybody worked very hard this week to just clean everything up and just get this place in tip-top shape. Thanks again to Kevin, Calvin, and Ian. That's so from Rhinelander, Wisconsin. Let's see a turnaround here. There, there, that's me. <laughs> All right, people. We're Thanks, gonna guys. Off. Thanks for tuning in. Yeah. yeah, thank you so much. And check out our Divers Den deep dive episodes. And we've got a lot of footage that was shot last week down at the Aquatic Experience in Schaumburg, Illinois. We're looking yeah. forward to that next year. We'll be in New Jersey. That should be fun. That so. should be fun. Thanks All a lot. Right. We'll see you guys later. Thank